What's cracking, everybody? New video. So the last video I talked about Pelican Bay. You know, and I talked about it because that's the place everyone always wants to know about. How was Pelican Bay? What was it like? Right. So I did that video. And I can go back, probably do a few more. But I was thinking, you know, I'll, I'll do the next video on New Folsom. And I changed my mind. I'm going to tell you guys about Tehachapi which was also referred to for a long time as Tallahatchie. Most people outside of California have never heard of Tallahatchie. A lot of people in California have probably never heard of it. Before I get into it, let me just give you a brief little history of the California Department of Corrections. First of all, Tehachapi was built, I believe, in 1986. Uh, New Folsom, I believe, was next in 87. I think Corcoran was 88 and Pelican Bay was 99. This is when the 180 design prisons were being built. Tehachapi being the first 180 design prison. Okay. The CDC... California Department of Corrections did not have protective custody yards or SNY yards for a very long time, right? I remember there was a yard, I, I believe, I don't know when Tehachapi's thing kicked in, but I'm going to tell you, New Folsom had a facility, right? Before you got hit in the CDC, they would just send you to another yard, until you got hit there, until the word came and you got hit there. And so you just kept getting hit until you died or paroled, I guess. I, I don't know. But New Folsom A Yard, they created a thing on A facility over there that was very, very high power guys that had been hit, been washed up. You couldn't just get hit on some other yard and they would place you on a yard. I don't know what their criteria was, but I know it was high powered over there to where those guys couldn't go anywhere in the state. So they created that. I don't know when they created that. Somebody else uh, can answer that question. That's that's a real prison historian. I'm not. I know it loosened up later and bottles that were getting hit on B and C facility were getting sent to a yard. But that was that, that came later. So that I think that was the first protective custody yard in the state. To Hatchapi, when it first opened um, the 180, I think it was a shoe. I don't know. Somebody can correct me or confirm me, right? But I think it was a shoe briefly. It became a shoe again later, but I think it was, I think it was a shoe. And then I don't know what year the CDC decided to make it not a shoe and, and, and make it a regular yard, so supposedly regular yard, right? But what Tehachapi really was, was the CDC's very first 50-50 yard. For those of you that don't know, 50-50 yards were, that's where when dudes would get hit in other level fours, level, level four, 180s, whatever, um, they would throw them over there. But they would also throw dudes who had never fucked up, dudes coming out of the shoe, uh, dudes that were trying to get closer to home would get sent there and then they would wind up killing somebody. There was a lot of that. Tehachapi has a very violent and bloody history. It is it is something else, right? So I got out of the shoe in 1997, right? And uh, I went to a facility in Pelican Bay for about a week, a week and a half. And then a bottle on, on B yard got a job on A yard. So they swapped me and him. So I got his bunk on, on B yard. He got my bunk on A yard, right? So I'm on A yard and I'm there for a few months, but I was endorsed to Tehachapi. And 
none of us knew. We were like, are they clearing out a whole yard? And, you know, are we going to go into empty cells? Nobody knew. Nobody in the shoe knew before I left because they were endorsing a bunch of us in Pelican Bay shoe to go down to Tehachapi, right? So needless to say, those of us, when we hit B yard, we started asking, around, hey, who, who else got put up? Who else got endorsed to Tehachapi? And those of us that did, we immediately started game planning. This is what we're going to do. Whoa, we had our we had our game plan, right? So what the CDC had decided they were going to do is they were going to flip uh, to hatch B, 4A and 4B. They started on 4A, right? And they were going to send all those guys there to Calipatria D facility. We didn't know that part. We just knew, like, we're going there. We don't know if anybody's going to be there. If we're going to empty cells. If we are, if we're there first, shit, we're going to get all the jobs, whatever. What we didn't know is the Pelican Bay bus was the very first bus. And the second bus was High Desert. Every week, they brought a bus. Right. And there was a reason we knew the reason why they would start with Pelican Bay and then High Desert. Right. I think everybody can understand why they would start with those two crazy ass joints. Right. Well, I remember we got on the bus. And uh, we went from Pelican Bay. If I remember right, we only laid over one spot i'm trying to remember if, we, if that was one of my bus rides where we laid over in two but i think we laid over in one spot and uh it was kern valley was it kern valley one i don't know if it was kern valley yet if that was open i don't think that was open it was uh delano i think is where we were yeah delano and they placed us all in ad say right and like I said, we had all left from the shoe to B yard and then now. And we had spoke to the legends in the shoe. Hey, this is where we're going. You know, and there, nobody knew what it was. We landed in Delano. I had said there was a legend there. And we asked him, hey, have, do you know, since you're, you know, a little bit closer to down here, you know. He says, nobody knows. So. Uh, our bus almost had a riot with the COs in r and I almost forgot that part. Maybe that's a different story. I doubt it's not long enough. Um, but I don't know who they were used to dealing with in that r and r But they had a bunch of knuckleheads in that bus. And um, we weren't having some of the shit they were doing. So anyway, so we get back, loaded back on the bus. We go to Tehachapi. Now, I want to tell you that there were... Two dudes on the bus with us that we knew, I'm not going to say who they are. One of them, I'm not going to say who they are. We knew who they were and they had an issue coming. So we knew off the top, okay, there's two right there. But everybody on the bus was a knucklehead and was like, these bottles ain't worth no points. Those of you that know what I'm talking about when you say points, uh, I'm not talking about points, CDC points. I'm talking about points within the faction. Like, oh, damn, you hit that dude. These two dudes were not anybody where anybody was going to be like, damn, homes, you did that. So everybody on the bus being knuckleheads was, okay, we know these two dudes are already, we already know their story. But let's look for a prize, right? I remember in r because I was looking around and everybody that was going was my age. Except one dude, an OG, who had started doing time in the in the in the in the joint, I think in like 69, 70. My older homeboy who was on BR with us, they started, they were doing time together in the 70s. My older homeboy told me, hey, homes, that bottle's got a lot of bodies, so um, that's who you want to run around with. So in R and R I I went to him because I felt like, you know, again, this is a different type of mentality. I felt like everybody that was in on that bus with us, I knew I was willing to kill somebody on the yard 
and I knew that the OG was too. Uh, so I approached him and I said, look, well, this is this is what I have in mind. And he said, so do I. And I said, you want to sell it? He said, yeah. So we get to Tehachapi, right? And like I said, we had all agreed in Pelican Bay. We're not going for an easy target when we get there. We're the first bus. So um, we didn't know we were the first bus, period. We just knew we were the first bus from Pelican Bay, right? So we knew we want to make a lot of noise. We want to set the tone. So, I mean, prison is very brutal, very evil. So we got there. And uh, it was different. I'll tell you one thing I remember I'll never forget. Walking into R&R, &R, getting uncuffed, there's a, there was a poster on the wall. And I know for a fact a lot of CEOs watch our channels. And I know anybody that was in Tehachapi, 4A, convict, or guard is going to remember this in R&R. &R. There was a poster on the wall. And it was a bunch of dogs. And in the center was one single cat. And it had a question. What was it? Uh, filling out a place. That's what it said. Filling out a place with a question mark. We looked at it and we laughed. Because that yard was full of dudes who had been hit and had agendas, had animosities. Then you had us coming in. We were the guys they were mad at. This is 1997, and it was, I'm tired, like I said, it was the first bus. So we, we looked at it and we laughed. I remember getting, when they told us to go, and it was at the time, this was before they put the shoe there, the second time, right? So they put us in uh, seven block, eight block was at sake. They put us in seven block C-section. And uh, it was it A section? I think it was A section. And um, so I don't remember how the way it, it's different than any other 180. I'll tell you guys right now. When they built Tehachapi 180, they built blind spots in. That's why Tehachapi 180 is completely different. Corcoran, uh, Pelican Bay, all the other ones that came after are the same. They realized the mistakes that they made. And that's why so many people were murdered in, in, in Tehachapi. But I remember... They escorted us there to the orientation, to the fish room, right? And I remember the slider opening up, the door to enter. And they had us all in a row, right? And the slider opened. And they asked you, what's your name? And you tell them, they're like, okay, you're going to this cell. And I remember walking in, and as soon as I stepped in, all around the day room, there was bottles facing the wall. So that we couldn't see their face. We could just. And I, and I remember looking. I was like. The fuck kind of weird ass shit is this? So we all went to our cells. The cells they had assigned us. Right. Boom. They closed the doors behind us. When the last bottle went in the cell. You hear the cell door close. Boom. The CO said something man. And all them bottles. That were facing the wall. Turned around. And they were disrespectful. Fuck you, coward motherfuckers. And you're lucky we're leaving. Ah, this shit, right? I got trolled. Hey, I just snapped. They were trolling me. They were trolling us. Um, but they were talking about all the high-powered shit that they would have done to us. Even though we just walked through their day room, right? And so we looked and we're like, what the fuck? So we got off the fucking window. Like, I don't even want them to see my face, eh? Um, but what was crazy is, as they were taking us out of the bus and un unloading the bus, they were loading it up with those guys' property. They got on the bus and then went straight to Calipatria. My Sally and I, because we were um, serious about trying to make it out to the yard, find out who's there, because we had already heard some names, 
right? But we wanted to get out there and see for ourselves. So we made it a point. We discussed it. The state clothing that we got, we made sure we made it look worse than the way they gave it to us. Because we wanted to appear as if we weren't a threat. And I remember as Vato, and I'm going to say his name, Popeye from Londale. We come off for chow that night. And he had bonnerooed his state pants. He had bonnerooed his state shirt. He was strolling hard through the chow hall. And me and my Sally like, what are you doing? Why are you low riding right here? You know what I mean? Like, you stand out, homes. He's like, ah, fuck that. And we're like, huh, all right. Needless to say, this story, I'm not going to take it on forever. My Sally and I, um, we were told on because they knew who was there, who was. People had ran into us in other places, saw us in, saw us in the chow hall. And so they had dropped kites. My Sally and I got snatched up by committee. Popeye from Londo got moved on. And uh, by those guys. And they told him, you shouldn't have came in low riding. You drew attention. So when he was in that seg with us, we made a lot of fun of him. <laughs> we said, hey, you're going gonna to crease your pants up again and go back out there? <laughs> He was mad. But I will tell you this, man. I mentioned it before in another video. Tehachapi was very dangerous. The cops would kill you. They would break your bones. They would beat the dog shit out of you. I will say, the most active COs I ever saw were in Tehachapi. And, um, uh, There were a lot of, so, you know, everybody knows about the gladiator days in Corcoran, and I've mentioned it before. During that time span, they killed, the COs killed 12 inmates. During that same time span, Tehachapi, Tehachapi guards killed 13. Tehachapi is a dirty little secret of the California Department of Corrections. There's an individual by the name of Tiny. I'm not going to say who, anybody that knows the history knows he was in Tehachapi. He worked in the kitchen. And as far as I know, the cops killed three Southerners for moving on him. I mean, as soon as they pulled their shit out, they were shot in the head and killed. Tehachapi itself was whatever. Everybody was going out there getting paid. Uh, by the way, when I went to the hall, they decided they were going to move me from 4A to 4B. When they, as soon as they took my handcuffs off and R and R, I recognized somebody who was, um, yeah, wanted pretty bad, and that's where I caught my hit. My, my the the pegada that I did into Hatchby was right in R and R. Kamikaze had every damn cop that responded stepped on me, but I was thankful it was an R and R. I'm not gonna lie. Because had it been on the yard, the cops there protected those that were already established there. They would shoot the aggressors. Like it was, it was an ugly place, man. So anybody who's able to, who's interested, try to search up to Hatchby. Find out its history. I'm just telling you my experience. I will tell you it was the only ad seg I had ever been in where um, they gave you all your state blues and a beanie. But it was also the only prison I was ever in where you had all four seasons. Yeah, it snowed there. And we had to go out there to the yard in our, uh, I don't want to call them what they call them, but you know the little Chinese shoes with a plastic sole? Uh, it, was a, it was a trip, man. It was unlike anything else. And the worst part was the COs. COs would get hit, but like I said, that place, the COs were, I don't know, man. I think they were encouraged from the warden down. 
bust their asses, beat them down. So anyways, that's my video for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Everybody, please be safe. Be smart. Today is Cinco de Mayo. Be safe, man. Drink responsibly. Get an Uber. Make sure you're here for your family tomorrow, right? I'm out.